Joining us now with more on the risks that firms can face is Larry McDonald, Senior Director for Credit Sales and Trading at New Edge USA, author of the book A Colossal Failure of Common Sense about the 2008 demise of Lehman Brothers, where you were employed at the time. Federal Reserve at their last meeting, according to the minutes today, got a briefing on MF Global, discussed it among themselves, and decided they didn't really care. It wasn't a systemic problem. Uh, should we sweep it under the rug that easily? Well, it's interesting. It's the eighth largest bankruptcy in the history of, uh, of I guess, the United States capital system. Uh, Lehman, of course, number one. Um, but I think more interesting investors out there right now that are watching us are wondering, you know, what do we do going forward and how is the market digesting this event? And it's still happening. If you look at all of the measures that in 2008 that were moving up in terms of bank trust, so uh, two-year swap rates, if you look at LIBOR, Euribor, the TED spread, um, all of those indicators are still extremely elevated. And what that means to investors back home is um, if banks don't trust each other as much right now, you, you definitely want to at least have some cash and be ready for some pipe type of, of, of fallout. We have to figure it raised concerns in the financial community because all of a sudden there was this run at Jeffries. Yeah, I mean, the, what was interesting today is uh, the Jeffries bonds have been under pressure the last week. Uh, the 2018 notes have gone from like 90 cents in the dollar down to about 76 uh, two days ago. Today they were up about two and a half, three points uh, with the stock actually flat to down. So the Jefferies bonds have been all over the place. Uh, Jefferies is a, is a solid bank with a good balance sheet, but anybody that is, needs short-term funding uh, all of the in investment community is looking at any bank that needs short-term funding, and that's what essentially brought down Lehman Brothers. And a lot has been made, too, of Jeffrey's decision not to become a bank holding company, right? I mean, I've talked to some analysts who have said in the long run it could be good for Jeffrey's. They could have then had a leg up on their competitors, but in the short run, they're the ones who don't have the backstop of the federal government like a bank holding company would have. I mean, do we need to look at all these types of structures and question whether it's a good idea. It's fascinating. I mean, uh, I've been tweeting about this. My handle's at ConvertBond, and I, I talk to a lot of investors around the world. And they're all like, you know, what's this 21st century bank run? And that's essentially what it is. Is in, in, on the in, wholesale side. On the wholesale side. So, like a hundred years ago, people used to run to banks and take out their money, and that created that's economic a weakness. Life. That's yeah, what you yeah, we're coming up on Christmas. <laughs> but today, um, all the banks around the world, big and small. Uh, there's a certain amount of funding that they, they fund with each other, say one-year bank intermarket CD rates. Those rates have been extremely elevated uh, over the last two, three weeks all across, across Europe and across the United States. So it's not just banks like, uh, like we're talking about with Jefferies, but it's other banks all across that, that are exposed to maybe in, in Europe, say some of these European banks as well, even mid-sized banks. So it's something you really have to watch. Well, we went through this whole process of examining what happened with various committees. Dodd-Frank put into place. The Basel committees are working trying to get their regulations out there. But it still comes down to the fact that if you fund short and lend long, nobody's going to trust you in times like this. The model didn't change. Yeah, and um, unfortunately, you have a lot of competitors. There's big businesses, this prime brokerage business. And it's very easy for competitors to say, hey, um, XYZ Bank has a lot of short-term funding needs. Um, why don't you move your assets over to my bank? And so th there's just this very dangerous precedent from Lehman Brothers that that event really uh, is still with us today because it's, it's with us in Europe. People are looking at the collapse of Lehman and they're looking at these countries' balance sheets and they're saying, okay, what kind of economic uh, destruction can, can a bankruptcy cause over there? And, they're look and it's affecting uh, these banks today in terms of the United States. They're like, okay, short-term funding needs, look what happened to Lehman, and people are shooting first and asking questions later. But I think to Mike's point, just quickly, is there anything the regulators should be doing differently in order to sort of ring fence, I mean, not just in Europe, but even even ring fence firms here that could run into trouble. Well, you know, they're starting to do it. I mean, uh, open up. Uh, you're seeing the IMF today. I don't know if it's the regulators, but uh, the IMF took some action today to open up liquidity. The ECB and the Fed have uh, provided some kind of short-term liquidity to bank funding. So they can do that. They can provide liquidity because when banks stop lending to each other, then you have to go to the biggest banks in the world, which would be the IMF yeah. or, the, or the ECB or the Fed. So it's one thing they can do. On the regulatory side, they just can't react that quick. So yeah. that'll be something they try to fix a year from now. Larry, thank you very much. No Julie.